everyone. Welcome to the demystifying session of the digital edition of Tata Crucible. And with us here today, with me here today, is the man himself, Pick Rain, who is all set to decipher the digital edition of Tata Crucible for us. Thank you for being with us here, Pick Rain. Thank you. Always a pleasure. All right, so there are many, many questions that we have received from all of you. And uh, uh, Pigrain, I think this digital edition of Tata Crucible, while well appreciated and well received, also has raised a lot of doubts and queries because this is something that has never happened before. Uh, the digital edition in itself and the format also, it's all new, it's never happened before. So we have plenty, plenty queries that have come up. I have received a lot of mails and a lot of messages. So I will probably um, quiz you here today. And I think it's good for me to say your time starts now in your own <laughs> language. <laughs> well, let me first start with some basic doubts that are there. But before we get into the questions itself, all your quizzes out there, this is a specific Q&A session for all of you to clarify all your doubts. So anything with respect to the digital edition of Tata Crucible Corporate Quiz 2020, please leave your questions in the comment section and we'll make sure we cover, cover the question for you in this live session. All right, and those of you campus quizzers, I'm sure you all are here trying to map out what the format is going to be for the corporate quiz and see if something like that happens for you in your campus edition as well. Don't worry, we will clarify your doubts as well. So go ahead and leave your questions in the comment section. All right, let's get into the questions that I've received already. We'll start with some basic questions um, in the beginning. So the first one is from Anish, and he's from Pune. And he says, how exactly does the digital quizzing work? OK. Uh, that pretty much sums up this entire Q&A session. <laughs> That's like one question which probably should say it all. Uh, well, uh, see, it works in multiple folds. First and foremost, uh, I'm personally truly glad and excited that uh, this is uh, taking off in a big way. Uh, I'm really happy that the Tata has believed that uh, the external circumstances should not come in the way uh, of an annual event that has to continue. There can be modifications, there can be iterations, there can be adjustments. Uh, but life goes on, and I think that spirit is what one should salute first before we learn to adapt to what is the new uh, normal of a Tata crucible, uh, if I may put it that way, since everyone's using the word new normal, and that itself has become an old phrase now. Uh, well, digital quizzing is something which is probably becoming uh, national and big, uh, there are small corporate events which have happened in the past, but nothing really at a scale like this. Nothing really at probably the levels of competitiveness that one gets to witness at a Tata Crucible. So in a nutshell, what we're trying to do with digital quizzing is first and foremost, given the current circumstances, it's an individual event. I think that's the first big change for 2020 in comparison to the past. So people will take part from the safety of their homes and from the comfort of their homes. Uh, so that's a big change. People will play it alone. The quiz, of course, plays out in multiple forms. There's going to be a two level prelim, uh, a level one prelim and a level two prelim where X number of contestants will move from a level one to two. And from there, uh, we've got very much like the ground event of a crucible, we would have wild cards followed by the finals, which is like on the ground event, we would have zonal final. Here we've called clusters. So we move into 12 cluster finals, and then the 12 winners move into two national semifinals and a final. So pretty much it's the same thing. The only difference is it's going to be played digitally. Uh, the prelims, of course, on a Q&A software and the finals through uh, online uh, engagement. Uh, except that everything is going to remain the same. Uh, the intensity of the contest, the kind of questions, the formats, all of that, nothing's really going to change. Uh, so that's probably in a nutshell, you know, what digital quizzing is all about. Okay, Pikreen, I think it's not to give everyone a clue 
on how the research or the questions are going to be. Um, if I understand quizzing in India well, and if I understand Tata Crucible well, I think when we move into a digital forum, the questions will only get far more difficult and not the way they were in the ground events. I mean, that's how I see it. But then at the end of the day, we don't know what's going to come up. So let's. Uh, well, since you're not playing the role of a co-host and you are questioning me today, you made that statement and not me. <laughs> okay, let's leave it at that. Uh, let me move to the second question here today. Uh, the second question is, is there any reason why the Tata group decided to go digital with the quiz and not wait it out for some more time and then, you know, do the actual physical rounds of the quizzes uh, all through our country? like we do usually? Uh, the thought actually uh, started with that. Uh, in fact, if you go back to roughly about March when we were, you know, uh, well into the campus edition of Tata Crucible and uh, uh, we literally had to abort it when we were roughly about three fourths the way of our normal campus run. I think we were done with some 30 plus cities before we, we flew back. Um, we still waited. In fact, uh, there was a wait and watch approach which said if things get better, uh, we would actually continue with Campus 2020 if things got better. Uh, but, well, A, the Tatas were extremely prudent in calling it uh, to a pause, if I may use that right word, at that moment. And it was very prudent because it was almost as if they had some insight into the lockdown the way they, you know, paused it. Uh, it was perfectly timed in the sense safety was more important than anything else. At the end of the day, it's a sport and it can be held at any time in any manner. But there really wasn't a window to go ahead with it physically. Uh, they waited, they saw what could be done. And then we thought, OK, maybe June, July, August. Uh, but really, uh, if one looks at the situation, though people are getting out, it's more out of necessity work. Uh, but one wouldn't want to take any undue risks. So I think the only option was digital, else the option would have been to not do a Tata Crucible and then wait out till things get okay. But that really was not the intent from the Tata group. They certainly believed that, you know, life goes on. And once it was clear that the ground event is not going to be possible or it's not going to be safe enough, the safest option was to go digital. And well, who else to rely on to innovate and to try something new but the Tatas? So I guess in that sense, it's it's good at a scale like this. People can try one event, two events, you know, that's fine. It's, it's easy to do that. But to do it at a scale like this, the velocity with which it would happen, there would be thousands of people taking part to even manage the prelims at that scale, no jokes. So I think that's the reason the digital has, has come about. True, and uh, the way as I think um, we would rather have the quiz digitally than not have the quiz at all. I mean, I know thousands and thousands of hearts would break if we don't have the quiz at all. So this is a better way to do it, definitely. So uh, the next doubt is actually uh, something that I myself have and also some questions leading up to the same thing. Uh, the format, it's absolutely new. We have not had a cluster sort of a format before this at all for Tata Crucible. So could you throw some light on the format itself? I know you sort of spoke of it uh, in the first uh, initially, but could you throw some light on the clusters? How do people figure out what clusters they belong to? Some, some more information on that. Uh, it's quite simple, actually. Maybe the, the words are making it look new. Uh, in reality, what has really happened is India has been segmented into 12 clusters. Uh, it's pretty much like the zones that we have in the past. Uh, the clusters is because it's more clustered states. It's not state-wise or anything anymore. So it's picked based on uh, the kind of participation that Tata Crucible gets. So there is a logic to the clustering. It's not a random um, you know, assimilation of locations. And it's clearly listed out as to which states or which cities come under which cluster. For example, in recognition of the fact that, let's say, a Mumbai and a Maharashtra are very large crucible participants, there is a Mumbai, Navi Mumbai uh, cluster, and then there is a rest of Maharashtra cluster. 
there's a chennai and a rest of tamil nadu there's a bangalore and a rest of karnataka so this is to ensure people get a fair chance to participate and not large numbers fall into the same kind of clusters otherwise i think it would have been very easy for the tatas to do one national prelim but that wouldn't have given enough people an opportunity to move forward and the people who qualify can then be polarized to certain locations so that's not the idea uh, the idea was to try and replicate the ground event in a digital manner so the representation of the regions is something that the tatas were very keen and clear about second how do you know which cluster you're from is what you touched on that's a good question it's simple it's like the ground event the location of the organization you work for i'll repeat that the location of the organization you work for is the location you will take part in it's not where you currently are i completely understand in this current circumstance someone might be working in a tea plantation in shillong but might have come back home in trivandrum but that does not mean the person represents kerala the person continues to represent whatever zone shillong would come under so very clearly even if you are part of an organization where your work location is let's say delhi and you are now in hyderabad you will still take part from delhi because you're representing your company and not your home state so it's very simple the moment you know where your company is it's as simple as that so there's no confusion as far as where one should take part and the whole country is covered that's that's clear okay so the next question is from shreyesh from bangalore uh, he asks what is the difference between bangalore and rest of karnataka i think you've sort of covered it in the previous question uh, but if you would like to explain a little further into that particular location i guess that will help yeah see if you look at something like bangalore uh, rest of karnataka earlier we used to have something called bangalore and electronic city and then uh, you know people used to take part in that manner so technically the electronic city became like a rest of karnataka around uh, so what we are now doing is to give it a greater clarity bangalore is bangalore city so everything which comes under bangalore city falls into bangalore city so you know very clearly if you are bangalore and if your pin code says you're from bangalore then you're bangalore it's as simple as that so it's not rocket science and the definition of that is location of your office and the rest of it is rest of karnataka which means if you are hubli mangalore wherever you are mysore you will take part in the rest of karnataka cluster okay the next question is a two part question first one is how do we make sure there is transparency and there is fair play the second one is why is the quiz solo and not a team event i personally believe both these are connected that's the reason i have clubbed them but it's up to you if you want to handle both of them separately uh in a digital world transparency has nothing to do with teammate or solo uh, the teammate could be a mobile or a laptop so you know <laughs> that's a relative term in the modern world and we all understand that uh, so let me answer the second question first uh, the reason why it's solo is simply because of the safety of people and the comfort of people at their homes uh, if we had to make it a team event again the two of them would have to take place from their remote locations we can't necessarily assume that two teammates will be from the same geographic location we can't assume that sometimes even in campus crucible we've got two contestants flying in for zonals from two different locations you know so um, that's the whole idea behind solo and i think that's that's a given second is of course transparency fair play i personally think transparency and fair play is something that has to come from within whether it's a ground event or a digital event you're playing in a quiz you play to win in a fair way if you are not good enough to qualify on that day you do not qualify but having made that statement we've certainly put a lot of checks and balances in place uh tcs ion is the partner uh in this case logically uh to provide the preliminary framework and it's one of india's most robust ones so there are enough inbuilt mechanisms in that to figure out uh if people are playing the game honestly and uh, it's not difficult for the back end to figure out what you've been doing on your laptop or you know so and so forth uh not necessarily that i'm very competent to comment on that 
but the way I would put it is in a very simple way. Some of the nation's most respected and competitive competitive exams take place on that platform, including a CAT, including the railway entrance, which is a massive one. All of that happens on the ION backend. So they've got their act right. And for sure, Crucible is uh, relatively on an easier scale for them, technically speaking. So we've taken care of that. The moment one moves into the live rounds, there's absolutely no problem because your camera facing at that time. Uh, so there's no ambiguity on that front. So I think all the checks and balances have been put in place. Uh, there are a lot of them. It's not just one check, check and balance. So I would believe the framework will ensure fair play for sure. Uh, it's up to the contestants after that, but I still think it's a sport. I, I don't get drawn too much into constructing things on the basis of suspicion. You construct things on the basis of trust. Well, that's a very good line. I think that should go under pick brain quotes. I think that's a very good line from I, it. I think that's a learning from the Tatas and not a pick brain quote. <laughs> Definitely, I agree. True. Uh, there, there are a lot of questions that I'm receiving here, which are uh, mostly uh, revolving around, again, transparency, fair play. How do you ensure that it, there is, it's 100% cheater proof? That's one of, it's, it, I'm telling you the exact words. I'm receiving these questions here. So um, I think beyond the, um, the back end itself, what else do we do? Uh, as human beings, actual human beings who are behind this entire quiz, what are we doing to make sure that we somehow reduce or remove cheating entirely? Uh, there are a huge number of checks and balances. I, uh, I can volunteer information to the extent that uh, we've had far more meetings and discussions with the Tata group on transparency and fair play than the quality or the type of questions that I'm going to ask. So it's, it's, it underlines what has been spoken about. Uh, TCS has done this time and again for years. It's not a software they've created for Tata Crucible. So I can assure contestants that from a framework point of view, it's the nation's most robust framework they can expect to play on. Well, I'm, I'm sure they would be a little happy with the uh, answer that you've given right now. Uh, there is one suggestion here, Big Green. Uh, it's from Anura Krishna. I, I found it a little funny, so I thought I must tell you here. Uh, he says, uh, can we rename the cluster as Bio Bubble? <laughs> I have no idea with respect to what logic we should rename it as a bio bubble, but I just found it funny. Uh, the next question here is, is the prelim accessible from mobile? The question is from Vishnu Shantosh. Okay, uh, I like the bubble idea. It's a nice question. I, I think it's a very nice question. Crucible is always also about sense of humor. Uh, it's not about taking one's life too seriously. Sometimes Crucible contestants take it very seriously. Uh, I try making it more comfortable, uh, but I think Anurag, maybe if he had been part of this uh, suggestion group earlier, we would have called it bubbles and not clusters to go in line, but that's a, uh, it brings a smile to my face. So good one, Anurag. Uh, moving on to the second part, uh, uh, if you can just refresh me on that. Uh, Vishnu wants to know if the prelim is accessible from yeah. a mobile device. Vishnu, uh, okay. Uh, it is. Uh, the prelim can be taken both, I think, on a, a laptop and a mobile. Uh, but it's better to read the instructions there on what is more comfortable to take. I know a lot of youngsters are more mobile comfortable, but I would like to believe, given that it's a quiz, uh, there is going to be a fair amount of reading material for a quiz. Uh, for a question, uh, there are going to be answer options that you need to choose. Personally, I mean, I I don't know uh, how comfort levels are with people in phones. You can tend to touch the wrong answer option on a phone. So if, if you have the option of a slightly bigger screen like a laptop or something, I would advocate that. But technically, there is no difference. Uh, what loads on your laptop will load on your mobile. So. 
that should not be a problem but i'd like to believe uh, quizzes normally are easier to take even visual questions uh, i'm not too sure you would be really comfortable at the screen size of a you know phone but i've seen a lot of youngsters today when i used to be on those flights watching movies on phones i i still not figured how people do that but anyway if you were taking part in tata crucible what would you choose a laptop a mobile a wifi what what would you do i think that would answer the question these people all our quizzers want to know yeah from my understanding of technology i would do laptop and i would definitely do a lan connection even if i'm doing an internet at home uh the there is at least my personal understanding for the amount of uh learning we've all had in the last 4 to 5 months i think a lan cable works far better than a wifi network so one of the key things in a contest like this is that you're responsible for your internet connection uh this really nothing much to the tatas or anybody can do to ensure your internet connection is good as a contestant so you've got to take care of your internet connection and i would play from a laptop for sure yes i think that answers the question very well uh, i also do agree because uh, on laptop on a lan the stability of the connection is usually way higher uh, i am on a lan connection right now so it, i definitely agree with you on that uh, the next question here is from pankaj jindal and his question is uh, it's more of a, a something that he hopes for he says we hope digital is only the pit stop and it would be on offline next year so there are two versions to this that we have received okay uh, which is very interesting and uh, uh, one doesn't know how it will pan forward but yes while everyone's used to uh, the physical contest if i should call that the ground on ground contest uh, yes there is a lot of energy there's a lot of camaraderie there's a lot of friendship uh, all of that happens perfectly yes but the question to ask is is this an event which can be conducted digitally the answer is an affirmative yes can a wimbledon tennis championship be conducted digitally the answer is no so when it is possible to technologically enable certain events you would want to do that now the flip side of what he says is people who have written to us saying this is the most brilliant thing that could have happened because i could never take part in a tata crucible because it did not come to our city and i received a mail from someone in kohima so yes we have not been able to reach for example in the northeast we we do only two locations we we do guwahati we do shillong that to for campus uh, for corporate we do just guwahati and people come into guwahati we go up north up to jammu we don't do kashmir so the teams come in there so there are a lot of people who may not necessarily only be in that form but even in certain cities could be a little far away so suddenly it makes it a truly national event in that sense what about someone in andaman and nicobar you know so someone in port blair someone in lakshadweep all of them can take part now so there are two sides to it uh people who have been part of the physical event would like it to be physical but the previous statement of mine is more important is it possible to do a quiz digitally the answer is absolutely yes and i think a lot of views might just change after tata crucible is over maybe i think someone who's attended tata crucible quiz uh, is so impressed and is so into the aura that is created around the entire quiz that they probably miss it i miss it myself i'm sure you do too but but the other flip side of it is it's more accessible more number of people can take part right now it does not matter where which part of the country you are from so i think that that's that's a that's a very good uh, plus point or plus side to this uh, digital quizzing uh, the next one here is from multiple people uh, anirudha datta and k shrinivasan they are asking for a sample uh, prelim or a demo prelim on the ion platform so they get accustomed to the entire platform so they are asking for a sample quiz uh, before the actual prelim the round 1 can take place 
Okay, I'm not part of Tata Sons. I only have a few shares in TCS. That doesn't entitle me to that decision. But uh, well, we can take that forward as a recommendation from this Q&A. Uh, I would not honestly be able to answer that question given the kind of timelines and uh, the availability of slots with TCS Ion. Uh, it's not very easy uh, for you to get a slot on TCS Ion's dashboards. They're super, super uh, busy currently, especially because all exams are moving on to the Ion platform in India. So uh, yeah, it's a good suggestion from a quizzer's point of view. I don't know uh, if that's possible or not, but certainly something that we can take forward as a feedback to the Tatas, for sure. Uh, quizzers out there, please be rest assured. We have had many quizzes on this platform. We have had children, some classes six, seven, eight, taking prelims on this platform. It is very easy. Just go through the rules correctly, instructions correctly. I'm very sure you'll get it right. But of course, like Pickbrain said, we will try our best. But depending on the availability, we'll see what can what can happen. All right. Uh, the next question here, Pickbrain, um, I, I don't. Honestly, I feel a little odd to ask you this question, but I do understand why our quizzers will have that doubt. I do understand that part. Probably there was some misinterpretation that happened. So the next question is, why have the Tatas reduced the price money? Oh, they, they've not. Uh, it's, it's not uh, at all reduced. If you actually, it's very simple math. Uh, the earlier prize amounts were for a team of two. So if you actually divide the earlier prize money by two, it's exactly the same amount. Uh, what an individual would have got if they had one Tata Crucible last year is what the individual would now get. So what I think they're conveniently assuming here is their teammates' money is their money, which is not. So <laughs> it, it still had to be divided by two. So I, I think they're looking at it as the face value of the amount and negating the fact that it's an individual contest now. Oh, Correct. trust the Tatas to not get that wrong. So, no, no, not at all. That's that's not even a, not even and a thought that crossed. So. I actually recall uh, what Mr. Ishad Hussain had told. He was one of our uh, chief guests uh, some time back. And uh, I remember this. I think I'd also read it somewhere. He said, don't, uh, he said, play the game beyond the price. I think uh, not just him, if all of you just interact with some of our champions from the past, they will tell you if you keep all of these things and we have the prize money and all of that in your mind, it will start weighing on you. I think you should just focus on the game and just do your best. I, I have fun. Uh, I think having fun with what you do is the best thing to uh, get it right and do it well. Uh, th that's always worked. Uh, Big Brain, the next question is um, a little tricky on uh, who is uh, allowed to take part or who is eligible to take part. Uh, this question is from Siddharth Walia and he says, for the corporate edition, is it strictly enforceable that only the people that are currently employed are eligible to register considering the current pandemic scenario? The second part of the question is, what if while I register, I'm employed, but once the quiz starts, I may have been laid off. What happens then? Well, I pray for the latter not to happen for anybody. I, I don't want anybody in this country to be laid off. Uh, see, the rules of the game are well defined. It is an inter-corporate event. So you would have to be the employee of a company at the point in time of taking part. Uh, it is a scenario we have even faced before a COVID situation. Uh, there are people who've been in companies and sometimes they thought that Tata Crucible will be over by a date. So they had put in their papers and their last date was over and Crucible got postponed for whatever reasons. Uh, you know, we've battled floods, we've battled all sorts of situations in the past with Tata Crucible. So those are not even in our control. So dates had to move. Uh, sometimes you had elections which moved, sometimes you had curfews. So we've seen all sorts of things, you know, that come in the way of a ground event. And in such circumstances, when the dates have got moved and the person was not an employee, the person was not allowed to progress in the contest. So you you certainly can't do that. I mean, you, you've got to be a bona fide employee of a company 
when you are taking part because you're representing that company. Forget about you or the Tatas being comfortable with allowing you. What if the company you have resigned from has a problem with you representing them? So that's a fair point, right? I mean, they can say you can't use our name. So the rules are very clear and these rules have not been, it's got nothing to do with uh, the pandemic or anything. These are data crucible rules which have stayed for time immortal now. So. All right. So I guess only because we have moved digital, some of these uh, queries are coming up while you don't actually see it as the same scenario, but technically the rules that apply are the same. Uh, the next question here, Big Brain, is uh, what we have mentioned in the format is 100 would qualify from every cluster. Uh, what if there are more than 100 with the same score? So a tiebreaker situation basically, but how are we going to handle it? Well, it's very similar to the ground event. Uh, in the ground event, if we've had 25 questions and we've got multiple teams of the same score, uh, we've got something called inbuilt tiebreakers, which is the tougher questions and so on and so forth. Pretty much the same. Uh, we've got multiple algorithms which are weighed in here because it's built into a software. So we worked a lot and very closely with TCSI on, on that to build in those uh, quote unquote inbuilt tiebreakers. So it's pretty much the same and we've done enough test runs at large scales as well uh, to check and validate uh, how the system throws up the results and then we validate it and so on. So yes, that's, that's taken care of. Uh, extremely similar. So nothing in terms of the quiz structure is really changing. It's just the medium in which you participate, which is going to change. Everything else is being, which is brilliant. I mean, that, that's something brilliant that the Tata's event shot. Everything stays the same. Uh, next question again is from Shresh Shah. He says, questions wise, should we expect a wholly different format of question uh, writing and framing? Is the question writing in an online setting more challenging than offline? First answer, pass. Second answer, <laughs> second answer, yes, it is a lot more difficult. Uh, it is not easy to frame questions for a digital medium uh, for various reasons, for various reasons to also uh, insulate any possible Googling or anything like that. We, uh, with the Tata supporting the quiz, we haven't required to get Google into the picture. So Google has no role to play in this quiz. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, it is. it requires a little bit more of crafty thinking. Uh, having said that, there are various other mechanisms to ensure that uh, there isn't, uh, you know, enough room uh, to try and Google out the keywords or anything like that. And I'm, I'm being pretty blunt in my statement here. Uh, it's, it's not something one should fear, and I don't think one should be too worried about it. Uh, well, I, I understand where fear sometimes comes from. I, I do know we are in the same space. We've seen a lot of people as hobbies who've been doing these quizzes online and there have been a lot of issues uh, which have been floating around and so on and so forth. But one needs to understand that this is the Tata Crucible. So a phenomenal amount of work would have gone into putting these questions on discussion tables and not into an event situation. So absolutely, uh, it should not be an issue. Uh, we've even gone to the extent of factoring saying, if someone's going to be taking this quiz, let's say from a mobile, then how many words can he potentially read in a question on a mobile screen? So that's the kind of deep learning and thinking that goes into a quiz like this. All right. The next question is on the level two prelim, which is the rule state that 1,200 will move to the level two prelim. Is it the top 1,200 as an overall? or compulsorily 100 per cluster? Um, it's a good question. It's a very good question. It is defined as 100 per cluster. Uh, but there is, a, in fact, an asterisk line which has been given by the data, which says that in the event of, let's say, a cluster not having the sufficient amount of participation or the sufficient scores or whatever the criteria will be, then maybe, yeah, there could be reallocation here and there. 
Uh, I would like to believe they would like to stick to the 1,200 in level two, but if that becomes 1,220 or 1,210, I'm not too sure that's a sanctity number, uh, but we'll have to see how it unfolds. But I would define it this way. Fair opportunity would be given if, let's say, two people are in exactly the same score and the same variables of performance, and therefore it makes it 1,210 people or 1,202 people I don't think the Tatas are going to knock out four people saying, no, 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 we've said only 1,000. So at least as far as that round is concerned, absolutely yes. But from there on, it's a defined number. So while the question covers only up to round two, round three is very clearly 12 per cluster. So there, there is no ambiguity of 13 or 14 or 16. It will come down to 12. OK. okay. Uh uh, the next one is uh, actually on the validation checks that we have on our uh, contestants who have qualified. So everyone knows that we have certain checks and balances in place uh, as and when uh, quizzers qualify to the next round. Uh, they, th there are many questions that have come uh, which ask about how are we going to do it digitally? I mean, in a digital format, what are we going to do? Uh well, there's always a partner who takes care of these things, and that is continuing to be in place. Uh, what is the validity of the material provided by the person is what a lot of people question even in the past. Now, sometimes there are people who walk up to us even in a ground event and say his ID card is fake. Now, the only thing we do is we write back to the company, and we need to get the company to validate that the person is an employee of that company. Now, if they turn around and say that the message that is coming from the company itself is a faulty statement, now, we are not here to question the integrity of companies. That's certainly not the, the intention. That is certainly not the intention uh, of the Tatas. At the end of the day, it's an event. So let's be very clear about what validation is, but yes, whatever checks and balances have been in place, continue to remain in place. There will be a company validation which will be required before people progress, so on and so forth. So questioning that validation is sometimes, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to answer those. All right. The next one is from Anil Raghavan. He says, if I miss the prelim on 27th October, what happens? Can I take part on another day? I think this uh, stems from what usually or many times happens in the ground event. Due to certain unforeseen circumstances, uh, quizzes cannot take part in their respective locations. So I think that's the same doubt that has uh, duplicated here on the digital platform. So what's your now in this case, In this case, too bad. Uh, there is no choice uh, because unlike a ground event where in extreme circumstances uh, the Tatas have allowed them to come and take part in a zonal event or, you know, in some other location. Uh, that's not possible here because it's not prelims that's going to be held 12 sectors one after the other. Uh, all 12 sectors take their prelims together. Though the selection is sector wise, the participation is not sector wise. The, the participation dates are not sector wise. So one needs to be extremely careful that uh, they do not miss the event. Uh, well, I can understand you missing an event if you have to come to an auditorium, but it will be really difficult to miss an event when you're at home. So you, you've got to figure that out. But yeah, I mean, I can understand if there is a power failure, if there is an internet failure, you know, uh, unforeseen circumstances, uh, too bad is my answer because there is no there is really no room. And how many do you keep providing a second chance for? This is going to be people in, in the thousands who are taking part. Yes, so in the current situation with the pandemic and everything, uh, I think this is the best that we can do. And we are, we are trying to do the best that we can. And that's what we have put up out there for everybody. Uh, the next one, again, I thought um, funny and cute. And I thought I must make a mention here. That's from Rahul Kumar. And he says, it will be better if we hear the Big Brain entry soundtrack before all the quizzes to get us charged. <laughs> well, and you thought it works only for you. See, it works for the quizzes as well. 
No, there are people who've told me that they hear that music in their dreams. It's not something that I would advocate, but there are people who've told me this that you know it troubles them in the night when they're especially serious about winning. Uh, well, the crucible music is now almost a, you know a sort of a trademark music for people. Uh, it is, of course, a Tata crucible proprietary music that plays. Uh, well, it is a beat, and uh, I would like to believe uh, whether the medium is the same ground or digital. We will not let you down on the music front. We'll ensure that. Uh, there are many out there who are asking on how to register. So, uh, guys, uh, nothing. Just go to tatacrucible.com. Go to register. Uh, you will find the register link there, and just go ahead and do an online registration. It'll just ask for a few details from your end, and you would have registered for the quiz. So it's as simple as that. Uh, this, this next question is from Ayapa K. And he says, why don't you allow Indians staying abroad to participate? Uh, see, there are various reasons for it. And it is a contest which has been only for companies in India. Uh, so the whole idea is to digitally enable a ground event. It's not a new event that is being created by the Tatas. Because it's possible, you don't change the geography for it. So it's very clearly Tata Crucible corporate for Indian companies and the rule stays. Uh, campus happens in different countries, but uh, therefore it happens in different countries for various reasons. Uh, here very clearly it is a ground event that is being enabled digitally at this point in time. So the geographies don't change because of technology at this point at least. So between does that mean... Uh, a TCS employee from Singapore can take part or can he not take part? How if, does his, if his branch location is an in India location, then absolutely yes. I mean, he can take part. That means the branch location has to be India. It does not mean that the company has to be an Indian company. So if a TCS abroad in Singapore cannot take part technically. Yeah, right. Right. You, uh, you foxed me with the way you worded it. Let me put it differently. If I am employed with Coca-Cola Singapore, I can't take part. If I'm employed with Coca-Cola India and I'm stranded in Singapore, I can take part. Yes, that's exactly what I was trying to uh, understand. Yeah. All right. The next question is from Sanjay Chaudhary. And he says uh, he wants to register for the corporate quiz. But uh, he is placed, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, he's placed, but he's not joined the locator joined his uh, company yet and he's not yet received his job location so one does it still qualify him to take part to what location can he give when he registers what can he do he'll have to get uh, definitely a location or a, if he's not joined then he's not employed a letter of employment is not an employment that's an offer so uh, in that case, everyone who's on campus currently with an offer letter would call themselves corporates. So let's be very clear. A bona fide employee is someone who is employed with that company. So he cannot have an offer letter or an intent for recruitment from a company and call that an employment. Uh, so in, in his particular case, I don't think it, it qualifies at all because he's not yet. He can choose not to join that company. I mean, forget about the company. He can choose not to accept the offer. So he's not an employee of the company. He's not on the rolls of that company yet. Very clear. These are straightforward, uh, you know, definitions. Okay. The next one is from uh, Abhinav Dhar. He says, um, uh, he again, of course, wants to take part in the corporate quiz. Uh, he is currently located in Delhi. Um, he's joined his job, but he's working out of home. He's not onboarded yet, meaning uh, the job location is not going into the office physically. So uh, two doubts. First of all, can he still take part because he's technically started working to what would his job location be? Because he's working out of home as of now. I think I answered that differently. Uh, well, today uh, your quiz master is going to be quizzing out of home, so he's not going into his job location for that. Uh, so that's perfectly fine. The whole intention is to get India to take part from the safety and comfort of their homes. So that is perfectly fine. So if his job city is clearly Delhi, and if he's been asked to work from home and he's a full employee of that company, then he takes part in the Delhi cluster. It's 
simple no problem if he is working from home he would be working from home currently majority of us are Okay. Uh, the next question is about the clusters. So, if you could throw a little light on the cluster, how will the cluster finals happen? A uh, little more clarity on the cluster finals. Okay. Uh, from the prelim, we're basically going to be selecting 144 people across India. 12 clusters, 12 people in every cluster. Just like the ground event, there will be two wild card rounds for these 12 people. from which 3 and 3 will qualify into each cluster final so each cluster will have two wild cards and a cluster final from each cluster final the winner will move into a national semi final so 12 winners will move into the national semi final again we'll have two national semi finals of six people each three each will qualify into the national final so that's a very simple trajectory once we reach the 144 so that's like the wimbledon from there it starts okay uh, many are asking for the dates uh, i know the dates are the, out uh, yes but some of them are still asking I, I for the dates want, i don't want to give any wrong dates because i'm i'm not seeing the website but i would advise you to go on to tadacrucible.com and refer the dates yes yes i think if you visit tadacrucible.com you would uh, understand yeah. you will get huge clarity on the dates uh, there is a request uh, which says uh, uh, if we could try and keep most of the rounds over weekends that would be better than a weekday because it would be a little difficult for them to juggle work uh, it's just a request that has come through so i think depending on the availability of various uh, people or various resources that are involved we can probably take a call on that uh, i i thought i would just clarify it from your end instead of simply getting into the question again um, no, after, the, after the pandemic has started i do not know which day is saturday and sunday <laughs> i, I have truly been confused so i i don't know what weekend is and what week day is and i think it's as porous as that for anybody but having made that statement this is something that the tatas have thought through uh by and large most of the events at least uh, the final uh, rounds are planned to be on roughly weekends you know thursday friday saturday, friday saturday sunday kind of schedules even if it is on a weekday it will be definitely post 6 o'clock in the evening so it's not going to be a ground event kind of a 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock sometimes and so on so it's going to be uh, clearly timed in a manner where it is of acceptable comfort now If it's a six o'clock quiz and you're on a shift, then you could be on a shift on a Sunday too. So that's that's really something you will then have to figure life out because uh, sometimes a Sunday is not a good day even in a city like Jamshedpur that we visit so often uh, because the plant is open you know 24/7 on different days. So it depends on which shift you're on. So from the Tata's point of view, the timing of commonly accepted off corporate time and leaner days like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. is the prime focus of the slots uh, including the preliminary times the prelims also will not be a day slot it would be an evening slot okay i think that will calm most of our quizzes yeah uh, the next question is from mr sarabjit singh he's from delhi uh, he asks if this quiz is open to teachers open for teachers of course yes absolutely yes uh If my memory is right, I think he was one of the world teachers who was finalist recently. Yes, uh, he, was. he was. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, Sarabjit. Nice to see you aspiring to be in a Tata Crucible. You should. And uh, there have been many teachers who have done well in this quiz in the past. Uh, there are college lecturers who have routinely won this quiz at different locations. Uh, Bhuvneshwar being one location that instantly comes to my mind. The professors do extremely well there. Uh, as would in couple of other locations of india so we've had ias officers we've had anybody for a teacher you're a bona fide employee of a school absolutely yes you can take part there is nothing stopping any employee of any institution organization or entity from taking part you had like i said ias officers taking part So I think it was in uh, Raipur. I think we've had Raipur, we've had Lucknow, we've had uh, Gauhati. So we went. Yeah, lecturers like Bhuvneshwar. Uh, they've yes. done really well. True. Uh, 
the next question is about buzzers. How are the buzzers going to work in a digital format? Do we have a buzzer format? Is it a no buzzer format? What are we going to do? Well, it's definitely buzzers, uh, which will play a role uh, because that is also one of the most important ingredients, in my opinion, for fair play. Uh, because if it's passing on the internet, then the sixth person has far more time to answer. Uh, second, in any kind of a medium of a quiz as highly competitive as Tata Crucible, unfortunately, I take the flack at the end of the day saying he asked Rashmi an easy question. Now, I do not want to live with that at the end of a quiz. So I believe a fundamental fair play premise is every question is equally accessible to answer for every contestant. That is fair play as a thumb rule. And if we can ensure that with technology, then absolutely yes. But we've got a, a fantastic buzzer in place and that's supremely robust. Not an issue at all. The next question is about self-employed quizzers out there. Uh, the question is about why are they not allowed to take part? If you are an entity or a company, then you can take part. So nobody prevents you from taking part if you are an entity. That's been a very clear definition of Tata Crucible all the time. So that is not an ambiguity. It's just the problem of how they define it for themselves. Uh, but if they say that, you know, um, uh, I'm planning to do something and I call myself self-employed, then that is not self-employed. You must be having an establishment. Then you are self-employed. So you are you're a proprietor or, you know, you, you're running your own enterprise in that sense, even if it is a single person enterprise or a, or a two people enterprise, that's perfectly fine. No, nobody uh, stops. Does it also depend on the registered part of the company? I mean, does it also depend on that the legality? Uh, yeah, you would be a, a registered entity in any case. So, you know, you, you would at best have a bank account, you would have you know, so all of those things, you, you would have a registration of your company, even if you're a proprietary concern. So there are ways in which you would have a PAN number for your company. So there are a lot of these simple things. So I am not an expert at the validation side, so I don't want to really dwell on that. We, we, I mean, as Big Brain and team, we concentrate on the research side. So in that sense, yes, but if they do have clarifications, they can write in and people would clarify that. So that's not a problem. Yes, I think that would be a better, uh, yeah. better idea instead of us trying to clarify that part here, since it's a little more technical than what we have actually explained. Yeah. Uh, the next one again is a request. Uh, they are asking for a easier to comprehend sort of a flow chart about the entire format uh, than the way we have put up right now. I, I guess it's somehow becoming a little difficult to understand to some of them out there. So they are asking for or requesting for a flow chart. Uh, and I think in the past we have had flow charts. Probably they're a little used to that kind of format of uh, the explanation that we give. That is why they are requesting for something like that. Another request is to please avoid IPL timings. Okay. <laughs> so that's another request that we have. I've just uh, received a phone call from IPL saying, Tata Crucible, please avoid IPL timings. Because they're very scared <laughs> people won't watch IPL and will tune on to Tata Crucible. So I'm we'll sure that will happen that. next. <laughs> we'll consider that. The next uh, question is, if the audience can watch uh, cluster finals or cluster finals onwards, can the audience watch? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. The whole event is designed to be an audience-friendly event. Eventually, it would appear on television, as was a ground Tata Crucible. Nothing changes. Just like you do not have audience in the ground to watch the IPL match, you will not have audience in the room where people are contesting, but you would get to see it from the comfort of your home. It is no different from IPL, technically speaking. Players are playing without an audience watching them play from where they are playing. So we can't have audience sitting in the homes of contestants or in the studio where I would be. But for sure, what is happening in the event is meant to be broadcast digitally and later on television. 
Absolutely, yes. All right. The next question is from Shreya from Jamshedpur. Uh, it's an interesting one. It says, Big Brain, how is life from staying at Taj different from staying at home? Well, uh, to be very honest, uh, I mean, Tata Crucible has been a fascinating journey and many years. Both are home for me. Uh, home is home and Taj has always been like a second home when we are not at home. Uh, but this is again uh, a huge illusion that people have about quiz masters that our lives are always in the Taj. That is not true. Uh, if you intend to be a quiz master in the future, don't live under these illusions. Uh, sometimes you spend a night entirely sitting in an airport because you've landed late and you got an early morning flight and you do not have time to actually go and sleep for six hours in a hotel that is booked for you. So you stay in the airport and that's the most prudent thing you can do. There are times when you stay in a railway station because your train does not come when you have a 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. train. Uh, so life is not all rosy. Sometimes you don't know where your next meal comes. Uh, if you all have seen me traveling and you see me with big bags, it doesn't have more than a very light laptop. It's got food inside. So because you don't know where, uh, truthfully, I mean, the whole crew, the whole crew carries, you know, stuff because honestly, it's it's not easy. And I, I surely miss those guys who enable the ground events. I salute them. They are the ones who make a Tata Crucible what it is. Uh, it's not Taj every day. No, no way. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely uh, you know a wonderful place. Uh, I would miss the experience of hosting a quiz, of course, at the Taj Mahal Palace. That is a special feeling. Well, all of you quizzers, um, I can assure you, at any point in time, if you're feeling dizzy and your blood sugar is going down and you have no food around, you can come to us. We always have food on us. Big Brain is not wrong on in what he's just said. We we do carry a lot of food because you know that that's how life is when you keep traveling all the time. Uh, there is a there are a lot of questions coming up on uh, transparency and fair play again and again. Uh, I'm guessing some of you have joined us a little later. We have already uh, spoken of these questions, so I would request you to go back uh, and watch this entire live session on any of the channels that you're doing right now. Big Brain has already addressed those questions. Uh, the second doubt that is again coming up repeatedly is about the location from which you should be taking part. Is it the one that you're working from, meaning you're working from home? So if you're from Delhi and you're working from home from Delhi, but your job location is Mumbai, what do you do? That has also been already uh, tackled by him. So I would request you to go back and play the whole thing again. I'm sure that will help you. Uh, OK, Big Brain, the next question is from Dhruti. She's from Bangalore. Uh, is the future of quizzing going to be only digital? I think this is an overall question, not meant specifically for Crucible. Well, um, if I speak more, I mean, we're probably more in the education sector than, you know, uh, event management, so to say. So if I speak as an educator, I would believe like education, for example, is going into what one calls a blended model today. I would believe quizzing will also move into that. Uh, though we're speaking here today on a forum like a Tata Crucible, let's face reality. There are very few entities which can really afford to do a physical ground event at the scale that the Tatas do. You, you can't. I mean, you wouldn't have even dreamt of doing a national event where genuinely national teams take part. But today, that is possible. That is possible for anybody to do if they do digitally. So it depends on the kind of user experience that they would want to give. So I would believe digital quizzing will stay, but I would also believe, especially in probably school events and so on, where maybe as a nation, uh, we may not want to have them traveling for a longer period of time than the corporates who can still manage their security and safety in a better way. Uh, Maybe we would see combinations of a large amount of rounds happening online and then maybe only a national final happening as a ground event. All these are possible. Let's also remember it allows people in all geographies to take part. 
So one needs to start respecting that factor also. So while we are so used to the kind of cities that a Tata Crucible goes to, one does not know where this year's champion could come from. It could just be from a place where we've never thought of even taking a Tata Crucible. It's possible. So that's what technology does. But I, I don't think it's, it's going to be A or B. So I think at some point in time, it will be combination of A and B. Sorry. Uh, so the next question is from, it's an interesting one. Uh, it's from Anurag Krishna and he says, um, he apparently has received some calls from IPL cricketers, Indian cricketers who are currently uh, taking part in IPL and uh, some of them are good quizzers apparently. He's asking a doubt on their behalf if they can take part. IPL players. Yes. Technically, the answer is yes, because they are employed by those clubs. They, they are employed. Some of them are uh, not full time employees because they hold dual employments. So if they are employees and there are players who are employees of those clubs, they can. If they are technical support staff, they can. So these are people who can take part and uh, very much yes. Very much yes. All right. Uh, the next one is uh, a comment, actually. Uh, again, I thought it very cute. Uh, the comment is, they will miss the audience goodies <laughs> that we usually give out at Tata Crucible, the audience prizes. So they no, say they're going to miss it. No, I'll clarify that. There will be exactly the same kind of audience, maybe digital prizes. I don't know what the prizes will be. But for sure, there will be audience questions as well and uh, prizes like. I think a couple of the interesting questions today are going to be sent uh, uh, audience prizes. So uh, even if a Q&A has audience prizes for a Tata Crucible, Tata Crucible for sure will have audience prizes. Yes, I will get to the Q&A winners uh, after some time, there is one last question that I have here for you. Uh, it's a question from Nandita, and she says it's on Campus 2020, actually. Uh, we spoke about it a little while back, but uh, the question is, why didn't we not complete Campus 2020 digitally? Oh, OK. That's a nice variant to the question. Uh, well, the intention was to try and finish it you know, as a ground event, which was just not possible. Uh, to do half or three-fourths of an event as a ground event and the rest digitally would not be a fair play in that sense. You know, it, it would be two completely different uh, ways of doing an event. Uh, so that was one of the reasons why they said uh, we will not continue with the campus crucible. The second problem that was a technical issue and it was a very fair technical issue that uh, the Tatas had, is because the event goes into March and almost into April, if we were to continue with that event, some of the contestants would be corporates by then, because they would have passed out and become corporates. So how do you allow a corporate to represent his college? So that was also a technical reason which had to be taken into account that you know, uh, there was a cutoff time for that. It's, it's not that it can't happen because sometimes these days in colleges, you start working before you pass out. I mean, I know scenarios like that is where your placement starts before you pass out. But technically speaking, we allow that in that particular academic year. But once the academic year was through, you, you would have another year which has already entered your college. So you can't allow three years of MBA to take part in the same in that sense, right? So those were reasons why that quiz had to be stopped. But there's been this misconception that, you know, while it's being stopped, I, I must place on record and appreciate what the Tatas did. They treated every one of those quizzes which were conducted as independent quizzes and the prizes that were due were given. So it's not as if because the quiz got stalled, all those winners were nullified of what was due to them, which they won. So. Yes, it could not progress to the logical conclusion of a national final. That's the only thing that did not happen in a whole region, a huge region of Crucible East. 
uh, campus did not take place. Uh, but that's unfortunately what we had to live with and all of us accept that no one's been able to predict what would happen or what can still happen uh, with any amount of accuracy. So we go by what we have with us currently, yes. True. I mean, going by the track record of Tata's, uh, I think sometimes we take it lightly, you know, we kind of expect them to give the prizes. Ha, Tata se unhone to prizes de hi honge, but we don't understand the value of it. I mean, it was as good as the entire event was sort of nullified right there, but that's, that's not technically yeah, yeah, what happened. Not okay. it's not yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we are done with our questions actually. Uh, we still are receiving questions, but they are sort of repetitive in nature. So I would request all you users to go back and play this entire live Q&A session. I'm sure it will help you to clarify your doubts. Uh, one last thing, Big Brain, um, is we have some campus quizzers who have been watching this Q&A uh, session here today. And uh, they want to know uh, what is going to happen at the campus quiz. Is the campus quiz uh, the next edition, of course? Uh, is it going to be a digital one? Uh, when is it going to happen? I think there is a little bit of uncertainty in terms of campus edition that they have right now. So some clarity on that will help. I don't know what's going to happen between RCB and CSK in the next three hours. How will I answer what is going to happen in January, February, March? If they believe I have that confidence, I am impressed. Uh, but having made that statement, uh, the intent and desire, I would believe, and again, I'm, I'm probably volunteering a statement on behalf of the Tatas, which may not in its entirety be correct, or I'm not entitled to make that comment in that sense. So I'm making my own personal observation. Tata Crucible is a ground event, and it has been designed and constructed to be a ground event. It is being digitally enabled currently in the given circumstances and situation by the Tatas to ensure that Tata Crucible continues. If things improve and if we have the vaccine before we think it's going to come and people vaccinated once the vaccine comes and if life looks safe, I would like to believe a ground event would become a ground event even if there are digital interventions here and there. Will that happen for campus 2021? Will that happen for corporate 2021? I think their guess is as good as mine and my guess is as good as the Tata's. I, I think like they waited and took the call saying, fine, we'll go digital with corporate. I think they'll cross that bridge when it comes. The flip side of the question to answer is, would there be a campus crucible 2021? The answer is a yes. I would not be able to say whether it would be a ground event or a digital event. And I don't think contestants should be too worried about it as long as the event is happening. All right. Uh, with this, we have completed all the questions that we have received. Uh, we have tried to cover more or less everything that they have asked for. Uh, and uh, there's just one quote that uh, comes to my mind. I, can, I just recall this quote. I think it's um, from Roger Federer, if I'm not wrong. Uh, he said, I focus on the game and not the grass when asked about how is it that he wins most of the times so repeatedly, consistently. Uh, so while I understand why it is important to know uh, the ground where you're playing your game, uh, you're the format, the rules, the, uh, the scoring pattern. Yes, it's important, but have fun with what you do. Focus on the game. I think that's what matters the most. Uh, Big Brain, would you want to say something more on that? So I think uh, very well put, uh, Rashmi. I, I think it's well articulated. Yes, I, uh, I would advocate as well that one shouldn't be too worried or paranoid about the turf, the fair play. Uh, you've still got to win. It's as simple as that. So if you are really, really good, you're going to win. And uh, the organizers are doing everything in their capacity to make everything fair, to make everything you know uniform. And the Tata Crucible has the credibility and the reputation for that over many years. It's not a new event. So rather than focus your energies, like you rightly said, on, you know, the worries, you would rather focus on, you know, at the end of the day, you still have to answer to get the scores. So, you know, you've got to get the answers right. 
And the second thing is, extending what you said, I, I truly believe a lot of us as contestants, and I see this more with the younger lot, get too worried and worked up with formats. Uh, great players are those who perform irrespective of formats. A Dhoni is a Dhoni, a Kohli is a Kohli, an ABD is an ABD, and I would like the latter two to perform today than the former being a Bangalore boy. Uh, but nonetheless, what makes these people special is whether it's test cricket one day or T20, they know how to adjust to the format and play. Formats don't make a difference to them. They adapt to the formats. That's what great quizzers are also about. And I've seen plenty of what people call, I don't know how they arrive at these terms, but they call them classical quizzers. And I've heard this, who have perfectly won from all sorts of quiz shows. And sometimes people view quizzes like Tata Crucible like a one day match. Uh, they win it with equal amount of comfort. It's not because they're good at that format. They're good with their knowledge. That's the important part. I mean, if you are finally well read and informed, the speed of response is going to be quick automatically. So, uh, like I would again, I mean, a beautiful quote that you, you recalled while the conversation happened, uh, play beyond the price. I think Mr. Ishat Hussain has left such a phenomenal line in our minds. It's not only for a Tata Crucible, I think it's for our lives. Play the game beyond the price. If that attitude is built in, I think you'll win far more at Crucible and in life. True. I, I completely agree. Uh, I myself have seen, even with Crucible, the so-called classical quizzes that you just said, uh, spoke of, I have seen them not necessarily bothering about the prize and the format. They just play. They play their hearts out and they do well at it. And like any other sport, guys, practice. I think that's the only and the best advice any one of us can give you practice and that really helps. Believe me, we have seen quizzers who have done very, very well just because they have practiced. All right, Big Brain, uh, we have some prizes here today. Um, we actually, yes, uh, we have prizes for the best questions asked. Um, I have, a, for the record, we are not the judges. The judges are in the back end and I have only got a list of the winners and nothing else here. So let me quickly announce the winners. Uh, Anurag Krishna, I think this was about the bio bubble suggestion that came up. I think that cracked up many of us. Um, next is Shresha for the question about how the question framing is different from uh, the, uh, the, the, online, the offline shows, the ground shows and the digital quiz. The next uh, winner is Vishnu Santosh. Uh, and I think he asked about something about technical aspects of the prelim, the, his question that was pertaining to the technical aspects. The next winner we have is Siddharth Walia. And this was for the question for a person, what if the person is laid off during a pandemic? I think that was a very relevant question given today's uh, circumstances. Uh, and our, the, the fifth winner for today is Abhinav Dhar. And this, this is for the question about location of participation, which was, again, a confusion with, uh, you know, working from home and your job location being uh, different. So these are our winners. Uh, and someone from our team, from Tata's, will get in touch with you. And uh, I'm sure they will figure out what kind of prizes are to be given to you. If I'm not wrong, they are e-vouchers. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not aware of the value of the e-vouchers, but uh, I'm very sure they're e-vouchers. And you will hear from someone from the team that is actually handling the entire live session here today. And uh, finally, uh, Big Brain, any message for all our viewers out there? This would be the first time in the history of Tata Crucible that someone has got a prize for asking questions. I wonder why the Tatas haven't considered me for all these years for all the questions that I have asked. People ask questions and they get prizes. Well, anyway, uh, that's nice. But that proves that there will be enough audience prizes. And as Big Brain, these would be the last five that I would give out without answering questions. So from now, we'll see you all at the corporate edition. Uh, wonderful to, in whichever manner we are quizzing, even if we are not physically meeting each other, truly wonderful that the 
movement of learning and celebrating business knowledge is continuing. That is important. And I truly appreciate the Tatas for organizing this uh, to clarify and thinking on behalf of a contestant. I think it's very important. Very few would do that. Uh, I think that's truly something that I appreciated when the, they contacted us to do this session. I think that's well appreciated and I think it would be equally well received because everyone wants to clear their doubts out. Whether we've done that or not remains to be seen, but uh, they can certainly you know, send in their queries if they have any before. There is enough time. Uh, but what's more important, and I would urge a lot of people to do this, is register. There is no entry fee. It's, it's India's best business quiz, biggest business quiz. Uh, I believe this is your easiest opportunity to take part in a Tata Cruise. It can't get easier than this. You are at your house. You just got to go click of a mouse. Uh, no one's going to know how much you scored except a software. So go ahead and have fun. But register quickly and get yourself into Tata Cruise. On that note, thank you so much. Thanks, Rashmi. Uh, truly appreciate the questions. All right. Uh, all of our viewers, if you have any more questions, we have tried to uh, answer most of your questions here today. But you have, if you do have some more questions, uh, I would request you to mail us or even get in touch with us on our social media pages. We will help you out with your uh, queries. Feedback at tarakrucible.com. It works. We It is regularly checked. Don't worry about it. There is someone who always checks mails on that particular mail ID. So you can mail us there and we will help you out. And like Pickrain said, yes, Tata Crucible has been one of the biggest quizzes of our country so far. And I think this time it's a unique chance that all of us have to make it the biggest ever because the, the accessibility is way higher. And it's no more to make a team. It's not no more a team event. It's a solo event. So technically, it should the participation should easily double, if not more than that. I mean, that would be the easiest math to do here. But all of us together can make it the largest quiz ever in history. So just go ahead, register, take part, even if it's for the fun, for, just for fun. Just go ahead and take part. Pro we promise you, you'll enjoy it. And we promise you, you'll come back again next year for Tata Crucible. All right. So on that note, thank you so much for joining us here today. And like I said, any more doubts, please get in touch with us. All of you, take care. Stay home, stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.